Hey guys, so the last video I did just talk, you know, about like exams and like my approach to them and that kind of thing. This video is kind of take a bit of a different turn. I wanted to kind of like try and give a sense of like things that I've learned over the four years or like things that I wish I could go back and tell myself. I mean, hindsight's a great thing, but you can't go back, you can't change it, but even if you could, you shouldn't because you might not be where you are right now. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. I kind of believe in that, but I also kind of don't. Like, you make your own destiny, you make your own path, and I stand by that. Like, for example, if I was around like 100 years ago, I would be a pirate, I wouldn't be a doctor. But there we go, I'm, I live now, so I can't be a pirate. That's a really bad example. I was just talking about how I, how I wish I was a pirate, so it's just in my head. Arg. I have been at USW now for four years, so after I finished school, I'm pretty sure you guys already know this, but um, I was very interested in the creative arts side, so I was kind of an all-rounder student, you know, both academic, creative, you know, I kind of did like balance both sides, but I thought, while I can, I want to go down the creative route, I wasn't ready to kind of like give it up yet. So I went to college to study music. It just wasn't like enough for me. So I would go to music uh, five days a week because it was the, it was a national diploma. I didn't really know when I was 16 like what a national diploma was, what like, I didn't like know. And I think if I hadn't known, I probably wouldn't have done it. I would have just stuck to like traditional A-levels. But like I said, hindsight's a great thing. Like I think like access courses can sometimes have a bad reputation when actually they enable people to, you know, open great doors for them, you know, which I, I think everyone should always be able to change their path they're going down or, you know, judge for who we are now, not who we were 10 years ago. Moving on. So I never thought music was enough. I, I didn't feel smart, and I know that sounds really stupid. I wanted to feel, like, academically smart. I wanted to feel like, you know, I was stimulated, and I think with music, I just, I just didn't feel that. I didn't, I didn't, it just didn't click. I mean, you want to love what you do, and I just, the passion wasn't there. Like, I love to sing, and I love to, you know, play instruments and stuff like that, but I just, it just didn't, I just didn't feel right. So I went to night school as well, and I studied um, business and law. It was nice to, like, have essays to do, and have, like, all, like, just to feel smart, like I was using my brain. Not that music students don't, but obviously I was a performing student, so I had, like, I was like singing a lot of the time or I was like learning lyrics or just learning like some music like I didn't feel like I was like academically using my mind if that that probably sounds a bit better so that's what I really wanted and I think I got that out of kind of like law and business so I thought okay I want to go down the legal route of music if you were assigned to a record label you'd have um, a contract drawn up and I was like oh yeah I like that so I went to do music law at university I remember thinking I was like I got in like really easy there was no interview there was basically nothing it was just like so straightforward UCAS was a doddle and I just got straight in but I remember because at the same time all my friends were like oh my god I got into this I got into that and they were so excited and so determined but I just didn't feel like that and uni's always been my dream I've always wanted to go to uni why am I not what's wrong so I think that was a warning sign like so I think I had no intention of going and I just I just wish I didn't do it and I remember thinking like oh, I'm not I'm not smart enough to like do the things that I really wish I could do. And I was like, okay, what would I want to do? I always had this interest about science. Fun fact, I actually sent two applications into college. One to do science, so biology, and one to do music. The science one got lost. So I was like, it's fate. I'll do music, it's fine. Yeah, that really worked out great, didn't it? And I was like, I'm still interested in science. I don't know what kind of drew me to it. It's something I've always wanted to do. I couldn't explain why. There's been no significant event in my in my life that's made me think, oh my god, I gotta help people. I just naturally, you know, I like to talk to people. I like to, you know, just try and do whatever I can to kind of help them. But I'm also so interested in like the medical side and like learning different processes and kind of challenging myself. I've always wanted a job that wasn't a job. I want a life. I want a vocation. I want to be somewhere where I can like be 24 seven. I want to be so challenged that my brain hurts. Like there's just little things that I like. I um, took up some volunteering with just like St. John Ambulance for a little bit. And I had a little bit of exposure to science and well, not so much science, but like, you know, the healthcare side of it. Something just like changed, like, there was no going back. I felt that kind of, that click inside of you. You were like, oh my God. Like, my eyes are open. Like, what, what is this? This is incredible. This is amazing. 
I gotta know more. I got some science books, um, just like some human anatomy books, even though now I hate anatomy. Sorry, Charlotte, but I hate anatomy. I like physiology, so learn like the body processes and like genetics. I really like and, like infectious diseases, like basically everything but anatomy. Yay, doctor. They don't need anatomy. Okay, yeah, we do. Shh, I didn't say that. And I just remember like sitting down and teaching myself and I made like a, um, I wouldn't kind of put like a portfolio, but I made like kind of like, like basically a big folder, like all the different body processes, what they did, what they do, all that kind of thing. And it was really fun just to learn about all the different things in the body. It wasn't like that much of a high level. It was probably like a little bit above GCSE, maybe a bit of A level. Oh, it just, it just opened my eyes. And I was like, right, that's it. Science. I loved the science side of it, but also I knew that I didn't want to be in a lab. I knew I knew that I like dealing with people. I I'd like to think I have quite good people skills. People usually don't hate me. As I went on through the St John ambulance, I did actually get more and more exposure, and I it just kind of reconfirmed this is like the vocation for me. And from there, then I went to the um, Welsh ambulance service as a responder. So I would go out in a rapid response car or my own car and attend nine and nine calls. I felt a little bit weird going to people's houses. But at the same time, it kind of, it really like confirmed everything and just being able to speak to, you know, the family or being able to like help with the patient. Like I didn't, ha I didn't know really like a lot what I was doing at the time, but just being in that environment, like something just changed inside me and I was like, I want to do this. You know, this is, this is what I want to do. If like, you know, a child was hurt, like I found that I connected very well with the child. I didn't put the pieces together at all. So at this point I'm like, oh my God, I love this, but I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't. You know, and I just sat down one night and saying, okay, if I really had to do, what, what would I want to do? And I was like, well, I'd love to be a doctor. You know, it's always been one of those dreams, but everyone dreams of being a doctor when they were a kid. Well, I, I think everyone, I, I don't know. I've always, you know, it's always been a dream, but you always think you don't just become a doctor. Like, you know, you always just think like the top students in the top schools and the top families. Years ago, unless, and I mean like a long time ago, like if like if your dad was a doctor, you'd be a doctor. You'd go like that. It just never occurs to you to actually think I can actually do it. But then one night I just kind of said, you know what? I would like to do like something in the healthcare. And I was like, I'm kidding myself on medicine. I'm kidding myself. Like don't even bother looking. So I looked at other healthcare stuff and I actually saw Swansea Graduate Entry Medicine. And I was like, Let's just have it, have a peek. So I went on the site and I was like, you need those GCSEs, check. Or you need those like kind of A-level, mm, check. And I'm like, huh, sweet. Oh, you need a degree. Oh, I have no degree. Okay, what degree can I do? And I remember looking at Swansea stuff and they had like a medical science and humanities um, course. And I was like, oh, medical science, oh, sweet, cool. I looked at it, but then they had like humanities and I was a bit like, oh, I don't know. So I was like, I wonder if this is anywhere else. And so I searched it and there was one in South Wales and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing, I want to stay home. And I looked on the site and I was just sold. I looked at the course, I saw it and I just read the page and I was like, yep, yeah, sign me up, I'm done. And then from there, then it started like a cascade. I did everything I could for that year to get me there. So I took just like an AF class in biology. I worked loads in the ambulance. I, um, you know, took like extra classes wherever I could. I did anything I could basically to, you know, help my course. So I even had like a print off list of like everything I wanted to do. Sorry, ran out of data on my um, camera. Oops. So I've had to go a bit quieter now because my mum's in bed. <laughs> I don't know what time it is. It's only half past ten. Oh, she's so lame. I did everything I could for um, that year to kind of make my application at the best. From there as well, I went on to do the science foundation year because I had no experience, like kind of like in science or whatever, and all the, like the scientific maths. It was really beneficial doing like that extra year. If I went straight on to med sci, I would have failed. I would have been thrown such in the deep end, especially with. Um, anatomy and whatever that I think I needed that extra year which is absolutely fine. I came out of it with a really high first and then I ended up on med sci. It was just incredible and I've just been so determined the last four years that um, it's just it's just been so worthwhile. You know from there now pretending I get um, a certain grade and I'm on graduation I'll be off to Cardiff Medical School. It's just crazy because I always thought like it could never happen for me. I thought I always had like no chance. My family is still a bit skeptical about could I be a doctor but I think it's slowly come around to the idea, so that's always um, helpful. They won't let me, you know, treat them, but I can't anyway, but they like, no. 
stay away from me. But yeah, that's kind of like how I got to med sci. I know that was like my original plan of the video, but I actually think it's worked quite well just to like talk about how like you never know really what's gonna happen. And um, I mean, the different years they were they were challenging, you know. I kind of gave 150% every year and it paid off with good grades but then like when it got to the final year I was very burned out and I think this year I've been like, I wouldn't say jaded but like I was just a bit like oh my god I just don't want to do it anymore I just want to sleep, I just want to, you know I had a bit of like a third year hissy fit I just kind of wanted to be done I love uni and I love studying but I think I was just feeling a lot of pressure to make sure that I get into med school. And a lot of my year from like say September till, well not even that. Because we had GAMSAT all over the summer. So straight from like end of exams in year two, you have GAMSAT prep, then you have GAMSAT in September. Then you send off your applications in October. And then you start interviewing around Christmas. And then we found out, so I met interview in January, then I found it in February. It's just been like a really like long year just wondering like what am I going to do and stuff like that. I think it's all worked out for the best. I'm just, I'm just really tired. I'm just, I want a summer this year, so I feel I'm gonna try and spend as much time as I can, just like chilling out before I go back to work. I made a point of saying I don't want to work full time over the summer because, like, this is my first summer off in like three years that I haven't had to, you know, study over the summer or like work towards something like I can actually just have a summer and just enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm gonna miss like blogging and stuff like that. Like, I really like blogging. I need to look over some like highlights of like what I've done over the year because I'm sure like most has been documented I always tend to post things on Instagram or something like that but yeah you never know kind of where your journey's going to take you you may start as a music student and end up going to Cardiff Medical School I think that's like the I think I should be like the poster like girl for widening access definitely hmm might look into that but I wouldn't change it for the world. I absolutely love it. You know how much I love it. I've talked about it enough. I think that's why they, they get me to blog because I don't have to lie. I can just be like, oh my God, I love it. But I'd recommend my course like to everyone. It's just an incredible course. The staff are incredible. It's just, it'll just stay with me forever. I'm just so glad that I was like, just let's just, let's just have a peek. Just, just a little peek about like, you know, what you'd actually need for medicine. Like, obviously I got no chance, but what do you need? And then it just kind of started a domino effect. And I'm just so glad that I took the chance to look. And it's amazing when you think about it, how many people probably think, I want to do that, but like, I can't. You know, it's probably like a ridiculous number. So, I mean, you just need somebody to kind of like, well, you need to believe in yourself, but like, even if you just have someone else who just believes in you, I think it makes all the difference. Hopefully like this video will make you think, do you know what, I've always wanted to do this. I wonder if, like, I could. I can't believe four years are over. It's just, it feels like it's gone in a blink of an eye. It's gonna take a bit of time to get, get used to it, but I've got a few weeks of just chill downtime, and I wanna kind of, like, video a lot, so... Hopefully we can look at some highlights, and I will actually, next video, do, like, highs and lows. This one's kind of been a, just bit like a, how I got here, how I got to Medsai. My journey. You know, if you, anyone wants to write a life story about me, it's, it wouldn't be that good, I'm sorry. But, you know, nobody wants to listen about the ginger kid. Nobody cares about ginger. Any questions, just let me or one of the other bloggers know and we will get back to you. Thanks.